and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton's Communications and Marketing Department. And today we're going to talk sports and also family entertainment. I have with me the caretaker um, slash owner and the coach of the Peninsula Pilots. Welcome, Henry Hi. Morgan and Hank Morgan. Yes, you're related. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us. We're excited to be back with you. And this year, you're here after the season has opened. So tell us, Hank, how are you doing so far? Well, uh, we're two and zero, so we're we're not going to go winless this year. So <laughs> the uh, you know it's a really early. It's hard to tell what that means for the future, but it's uh, it's nice to have a couple wins instead of a couple losses. It's so. a great way to start the season, yeah. and you it was a lot. You can't of win them all if you don't win the first two. That's right. There yeah. you go. That's true. And um, let's just talk about your season opener. It was last night, as we're taping this. Of course, it's probably a week ago when we air on TV. But um, you had a full house. It looked like to me. How many How many people were there last night? About 2,300, 2,250, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, actual fannies in the seats, as they say, and. Uh, it was a wonderful atmosphere. Uh, I think, you know, it, it, Dad said it during the pregame ceremony, uh, but you kind of miss those, all those faces and all those people uh, as the off-season progresses. And you know, it's, it's true. I, I walked in and I thought, oh my gosh, some of these people are my neighbors and I don't see them all winter. <laughs> then, mm -hmm. we, then the pilot season starts and uh, we all run into each other. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's old home week like we've all, all talked about. and I've. I got tired of staring out the window waiting for opening day, and uh, so it was just awesome to to have that kind of an atmosphere. Uh, there was they were into the game. The game was exciting. Oh, uh, it was a great game. Not as clean cleanly played as it will be as we you know continue to get better, but uh, it was very fun, exciting. We came back and won the game from a deficit, and I think. Uh, I think that was nice to find, nice to give to the to the fans. Yeah, they really enjoyed it. And I will say, you know, the city of Hampton is kind of a co-sponsor of that first game, and you guys give out a lot of tickets. We give out a lot of tickets. A lot of our employees were there. Um, it's just a ton of fun. We hope that you know that, that that means that people will come back. You know, the free the free tickets are out there. Um, the city of Hampton has been extremely supportive of. Uh, both the facility and other activities that take place at War Memorial uh, Stadium, but also of, of what we're trying to uh, get done within the community. And so when the people get tickets, you know, through that avenue, uh, you know, I think it can work positively in a bunch of different directions. And maybe one of those things is they come back. Yeah, it's especially nice to start the season that way. And I know when we were giving away the tickets on Facebook, we got some people saying, oh, I didn't know the pilots had started. I'm like, you didn't miss it <laughs> come Wednesday night. So We appreciate that. Well, you guys, speaking of the city and, um, and your relationship, uh, City Council recently honored, I don't know if it was you individually or the team, but all of the things you were doing um, not just the pilots, but you did a whole lot else out there. You've had some college ball. Um, and what always amazes me is you're so active in terms of fundraisers and helping people with um, unusual diseases, with fun, you know, find, trying to find cures and raising money for things. And Henry, I'm going to hit you up on this if you tell us a little bit about some of the causes you've, you've taken up over the years. Well, the college game that you referred to, uh, Old Dominion University came over and played Virginia Commonwealth University in a uh, fundraiser for cancer, Old Dominion, excuse me, v VCU lost their head coach uh, this past year, who was a local fella, Paul Keyes, and his good friend Chris Finwood at Old Dominion wanted to raise money for him. So 63 college baseball players, uh, three coaches, two women, and myself shaved our heads and raised uh, $14,000 for the St. Baldrick's Foundation and, and the Can Massey Cancer Center in, in Richmond. And um, the next day, as a matter of fact, uh, as it works, I get a call that one of our very good pilot fans from the Warwick Little League had uh, contracted leukemia, Connor, Connor Steele. So <clears throat> we want to keep him in our thoughts and prayers. And, and we hope that, you know, that the money that we raise does, you know, somewhere, somehow, sometime make a difference. Hopefully it makes a difference in awareness, you know, if, if you know, every dollar helps, obviously, in, in all of those causes, but um, if we can also, if we can multiply that, that effect by building awareness, I think that's also, you know, a positive thing, so. Yeah, that's really impressive, your community spirit. And it isn't just that, you also really work with Little League kids and um, giving 
free or discounted tickets. You active duty gets in free. I mean, you've got mm -hmm. a very community oriented and family oriented show going on out there. I appreciate you saying that because that's what we would like for it to be. Uh, you know, we try to screen all the lyrics and the songs that we play, and we do try to make make it a kid friendly environment. I, I saw a picture of uh, a child there last night eating a ice cream cone from the the ice cream store down in uh, in Old Hampton, and who was selling ice cream in our ballpark. And it was a great great picture of you know I hope a, a young fellow having a good time. So it's nice, and one of the things you see too is it's a a very safe and family-oriented atmosphere, and so kids can wander. They don't have to sit in the stands with their parents. They they get in, you know, groups of two or three or four and um, wander around together. And um, it's just very, very free and and safe. And it does feel a little bit. And I know one of your mottos is, you know, tomorrow's players and and yesterday's prices. It does feel um, a little bit retro, a little bit like. It's modern in terms of the things you do and the fun and the, and the environment, but that sort of, you know, 50s, 60s, small town kind of feel. It, it does. Uh, it might have something to do with the fact that the stadium was built in 1947. <laughs> but it, there's such a wonderful history at the, at the ballpark, and I think, you know, the city is, has wisely uh, captured that history. And, we want to do a better job of relating it to the public because it's, um, as Hank has talked about on many occasions, the uh, current home run king got his first base professional hit there. Uh, and who's that name names? Barry Bonds. Not yeah. that it means much to me, but people <laughs> out there will know yeah. these names. Two Hall of Fame catchers played there, um, Johnny Bench and Gary Carter. Uh, Satchel Paige threw his last pitch there you know, to correct the social injustice that uh, should have been done before that, and uh, should never have happened to begin with. But you know, it, it, I just think it really gives you a feeling, or gives me a feeling of of the important things that have gone on there, and the relationship baseball has to a community. And Hampton's a wonderful community. We we I could wax poetic about that for a long time. We're going to host the All Star Game this year, and our league is very excited about the fact that it's going to be held in Hampton because. We have so much to offer with uh, you know the beaches. Oh, it's a great place uh, to come visit. The shopping at the town. But you know you're competing with Nags Head. They, that's kind of a nice place to visit too, right? Or eat. It's Nags. It, it is, but you know there is something about the hospitality here too. Right. The, the people it's the do people. make a big difference. Has it taken a while for the rest of the league to realize that, or for the players you're recruiting? Because I, I suspect you have an easier time recruiting now than you did when you first started. That's fair. That's that's his job, and and I, I know how he's going to answer it. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's extremely fair. I think uh, you know I, I can I'm humble enough, and, and I try to be honest enough that I can admit that um, it's not about anything I'm doing different from the next coach, or or uh, we're not reinventing the wheel. Uh, we're just being ourselves, and and I think what, what when guys hear about how much. How much fun they can have in this community, and because um, they come and stay with families, and correct. you don't at this point have trouble recruiting hosts anymore, do you? Well, it's always it's always a challenge because just down. by the nature of, of what it is. But but you're correct. Um, there's a, there's a lot more interest today than there ever was before, and it's a great feeling. And uh, it, it's it's one of the things to me, to me that speaks to that community. Uh, feeling that, that you kind of get out there. And you're right, it is, it's a retro feeling, but that's not all bad. I think all of us like to look back into our childhood and think of, you know, a happy, happy time. And that's what, if we can pull that off, that's pretty awesome. Well, you know, it's sad to say that community is a little bit retro now. I mean, it's, it's hard to find a real community feel, and I think a lot of us want that and look for that. And so cultivating it, you know, even if you have to watch sports, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well said. We get a lot of kids that, a lot of, parents that that leave the ballpark and I try to make it a point to thank people for coming and invariably we'll get a handful each night that will say I remember when my dad used to bring me out to the ballpark when I was 10 and he'll have a little 10 year old beside him and I, I just hope that that kid has the same opportunity to say that. Well you know I will also say there are generations who who go to those games I mean I see a lot of older people a lot of people who are a little bit disabled 
and, um, and it's not the most accommodating part, but there are some seats up front, but people really, really, it's all ages, all walks of life, a lot of teenagers, a lot of uh, families, and, and a lot of older people coming in groups. Yeah. There's not a lot of places to, to um, that, that can welcome that range of, that spectrum of, of ages. And, uh, I especially, hope to, especially of those facilities that were built in 1947. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's a little hard so, to keep that. Yeah, and so it's a challenge for us, and we, and we uh, are going to continue to address that and, and make it more comfortable and more accommodating because we want, we want to be accessible to everybody. So your guys' season runs from roughly end of May, 1st of June, through? The middle of August. If we're any good, it's going to go through August 17th. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're hoping. And you have a couple of special games. You mentioned the All-Stars, but let's talk about when that is. It's July the 7th and 8th. We'll have a, a hitting contest on July the 7th. But it's not going to be your typical home run derby. It's going to be the best party of the year on the Virginia Peninsula. Oh. You're going to like it, Robert. It's a <laughs> lot, oh, I will. It's, it's a lot of cool stuff that's going to be going on at the, uh, at the game. And um, we're going to have a party on the field while we're, while we're hitting balls past you. Oh, fun. And somehow we're going to protect you. And, um, we wanted to theme the entire, it's a Sunday, Monday, but I refer to it as a weekend instead of a habit. Most all-star events are over a weekend. But, um, but uh, we wanted to theme the entire uh, event, the two-day event, around you know, the area. We want to bring people in and kind of show it off. So we're getting them out at the Paradise Beach Club at the old Fort Monroe Officers Club. And uh, well, that's where we're going to do our banquet and everyone's going to eat and, and we'll have a keynote speaker come in. And, um, but we want to ha get them, they're staying in the Embassy Suites in the Coliseum Central District. And so it's a Hampton Oh yeah, event. that's pretty much the whole city you're covering there. Yeah. Now you also, I saw, I was inputting the schedule into the city calendar and saw a Team USA um, game. Is that new? It is. We're going to be the first summer league baseball team to, to defeat Team USA. He wow. said that. Uh, he says this on the record, you know, at, at city council. And, uh, <laughs> it's not as if there's enough pressure without going on the record officially, but uh, we're, we're very excited about it. This is the best players in the country, yeah, uh, and it's them. not even close. It's, uh, if you go back and look at the, the rosters that they've put out there, it, you're looking at major league players within two, three years. Not not just professional players, major league players. But now you guys have had some uh, some pretty impressive graduates who are playing in the majors now, right? We yes. have, we have. We're we're very proud. There's 170 or 180 players total that are uh, have been involved in professional baseball after their experience with us. Which basically means when you go to a game, you look out. If you are interested in the sport at all, if you look out on the field. Over half of, of each of our teams is going to play professionally, and um, but name some names. Well, Ryan Zimmerman That's is, the, the one. is the third baseman for the Washington Nationals, and uh, you know he we're we're very proud of him, just like we are those that you know go on to teach school and, and mm -hmm. do anything else in life. And, you know, mil we've got a few military kids, and we've got a, a pilot and a couple of army kids. And you usually do have uh, someone from one of the academies almost every summer, I think. We, you, uh, sometimes more. My predecessor as the coach was uh, Matt Reed, who is at, at West Point as a coach. His father was at the University of Virginia uh, up until this year as a football coach. And um, so we've always had a good relationship with them, and we hope to, you know, that'll continue for a long time. So. That's great. Okay, and special events, the other things you have going on this summer, um, Fridays? Friday night fireworks. Uh, Yay! Yeah, I think there's five of them this year, isn't it? I think that's right. Yes. And um, you know, it creates some parking problems, but people really like it's the fireworks it. show, and it's uh, you know, we think it's entertaining. So it's still you know easier and more accessible than any other fireworks because sometimes there's too big a crowd, and yeah, I just I like it because you could sit there and relax after the game, and it was nicer when you didn't have a roof, but I, I do like. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I like the roof. <clears throat> well, we we uh, we want you to be excited, or else we'll fire some shots into the stands. Okay, so, I'll pay attention. It's a close proximity show. Right? I mean, you're uh, it's really a, yeah. You have good seats. I like it. Anything else you want to highlight? Um, every game is a party. It, it, it's always something going on. I, I enjoyed last night the uh, the little basket toss with the water balloons and. Some, one little kid caught every balloon without breaking any of them, and our general manager, Jeff Scott, went over and popped them all on his head. I thought that was a good moment last night. <laughs> yeah, and I, th I think I'm glad you said that. If 
atmosphere-wise, you, you, you were a part of last night's atmosphere, and it was wonderful. And you know, on an opening day, it's natural that some of that can happen in, in a place like ours. As we go throughout the summer, though, we, we want uh, participation in helping to create atmosphere based around whatever theme we've got going on. So if you, if you could, please um, friend us or like us on Facebook and follow what we're trying to get into. We've got, that, if you want to go through a couple of the, the theme nights that we've got, because it's one thing to have a theme and to do some things to encourage the beginning of it, but it's another thing for the fan base to just take ownership of it and mm -hmm, make it theirs. Mm -hmm. I really like the fans getting into the actual game late last night. Yeah. And, the, and I don't know what theme nights we've got. <laughs> we've, we've we'll, we'll watch your, uh, your Facebook. Check it out on and, Facebook. And also, uh, we, we did not do this previously, but we're going to put you guys on the city calendar and on the e-news that we send out. So I will once again encourage people to sign up, hampton.gov slash e-news, and be on the list because there's so many things going on in Hampton. I mean, I did, I did this week's e-news, and, you know, there's baseball, there's Langley Speedway, there's festivals, there's music downtown. I mean, there's so much going on. Hmm that we want to let people know all of their options so they can pick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. June 22nd is Team USA. Okay. July 7th and 8th is, is the All-Star Game. And then uh, we're here all the way through August 17th. www.peninsulapilots.com. All right. Well, we look forward to it. And uh, I will see you guys at a few more games, I hope. You're the best. And I hope so. You're a good fan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for coming by. And thank you. I hope some of you will make it out to War Memorial Stadium. Uh, great price, great entertainment, and a lot of opportunities this summer, a lot of home games. Thank you.